Hi, this is um, a video to explain my latest breakout escape room, which is uh, the day of science, because it's the last day of science uh, before the science year G in fifth grade. But I'm hoping that you can be inspired to do uh, some of these ideas for your classroom, depending, regardless of what class you're teaching or, or subject area or grade. But anyway, one idea I borrowed from Breakout EDU is to use one box because it seemed a lot easier uh, than locking a room uh, for safety reasons and so forth. But one thing I do differently is I only use three locks. Uh, eventually I'll use five for five teams, but today it's three teams. Um, and each team gets one lock to complete. They, all the teams accomplish all the tasks in, in a cause and effect relationship. And the reason why I do that is so that everybody feels involved. Um, and then they all get to complete every single task. Um, and also, it, it, they work collaboratively in their team, but they also work collaboratively within the classroom because all three teams have to unlock the box within time. So there's no competing, it's working as a, as a team. Okay, so what we do is we start off with a video um, using mu music from Moby, and hopefully they'll make the connection of Moby the musician and Moby the robot. So what we do is I'm using a Scratch program, which I found on, uh, well, Scratch, and using Makey Makey, um, using an operation game. We'll have three set up for all the teams and what they do is they have to play and make sure they don't touch the conductive tape just like so and otherwise they have to restart. But anyway, um, in here are uh, glue stick caps with messages and you pull it out and then you get a term which says in this case um, trade wins and then you have to go and also says uh, passing wins. So so it's passing wind down here as well. So then you have to find something on the wall, which I'll have uh, this poster here uh, with some envelopes below it. And you'll have all these different terms to look through. And they're looking for a trade wind. So one of these is trade winds. Once you find it, you open it up and inside will be this worksheet. But the worksheet uh, is interesting because you have a word bank that you have to complete like typical stuff. But however, there's four words that will be remaining. And if you read the instructions, it says the first letter of the remaining words will spell out the next clue. And the words in this particular one is insulation, population, acceleration, and precipitation. And it spells iPad. So that's the next clue. So, they'll, so hopefully they'll figure that out and then go into for an iPad in the classroom. There's three to use and they'll see an iPad with this sheet on there. So I'm using the Breakout EDU iPad app. Um, it's a num this one's the number lock. And if you look here, it says determine the amount for each problem, which is some of the parts of the whole and determining speed. So you have to complete each one and put the answer there, but also you have to find the sum of all the answers to unlock the app. So if you do, you, you complete each one, it adds up to 80, and then you enter that in. Oops. Enter 80. And you get your cl next clue, which is clouds. And if you look around the classroom, they'll see these bags of cotton balls hanging on the ceiling with string. And that's why I add the kinesthetic part of my activity, where I always try to do something physical with the kids. So these, these all these different clouds hanging on the, on the wall, and inside the clouds will be tiny little cards. This one is in there. And you'll see I have who has will be in, in there. And inside the I have who has, which is usually used for each student, I have the team completed. But if you do it correctly in the right order, it'll spell out a Google form, and then all the different parts of the bit.ly are there for the, to complete the Google form. Once you get into the Google form, it has several questions to answer. And I set it up in a format where if you get the correct answer, you, do, you only complete a few, but if you get any wrong, then it leads you to easier questions and so forth. So, so the, more, the easier, the more you know, the easier this will be. But if you're having difficulty with the questions, you'll be brought up to easier questions to help you lead to these out. So it might take a bit longer if you're having some difficulty. So therefore, the questions are a scaffold, if you will. The last clue will say you have to thaw out your next clue. So once they complete their Google form, the last part of it will say go to the cooler and use the best method of heat transfer to thaw out your next clue. And here you'll, uh, in the cooler, they'll find these canisters that will be frozen. Right now they're not, but they're getting there. Um, and it's airtight, and inside is a little a little note that um, that they have to get out. And uh, they'll have many materials to choose from to, to thaw out their item. They'll have plastic and wood and metal and a few other items around the classroom, and they'll select one and place this ice cube uh, on it, and hopefully it'll thaw, thaw it out within time. Uh, the metal one, of course, is the best one to conduct an energy, so it'll melt the fastest. So whatever item they choose, uh, they'll have to explain and justify their answer, which is another reinforcement of their content and heat transfer. 
So after they thaw it out, they can open it and read their clue for the next step of the escape room. Inside the thaw, inside those little canisters that needed to be thawed out were scenarios that matched one of these mini graphs. So each one of these boxes I have has a graph on here and they have to match the correct graph. Um, once you open it up, once you find out which graph is yours, then you open it up and you'll find a couple of different clues in there, which is your final one. It has um, the final. It has a blank food web, all these different animals with numbers on them, and this sheet. It says determine the sum of the of each of the profit levels to find the combination. So the first lock is the sum of the primary consumers. So you have to go here and add up all the primary consumers, and there's several different ones, uh, insects and so forth. And it will come up with a number, and then do your secondary consumers, and then your sum of the tertiary consumers. And it'll also be the three numbers in order to open up your lock and and your team will be complete. So there are all 10 steps, or 11 I believe, to complete this escape room where all the students are involved, engaged, and working together. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you.